Okay, we're at Rush Hammer Tech here today, and we're going to demonstrate how to drill out a Welch plug, which is a common plug on a uh, motorcycle sports carburetor that caps off the air fuel mixture screw for emissions reasons. We're, we're finding fewer and fewer of these out there because so many, so many of these vehicles have had the parts serviced over time, and you have two choices. What a lot of people did was put the plug back in after they serviced the carburetor. So once again, that's why it's a technique that we still need to learn how to how to remove that plug so that we can do it appropriately. So we've got uh, quite a few different tools and specifications and different things we're going to show you guys over here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a look at, at uh, one of the ways that these Welch plugs have been removed over the years that's very successful. And that's from uh, the company DinoJet. makes uh, great jet kits out there we're all familiar with using. And one of the things that they include in their jet kit is they include this... Um, this plug drill and it also states the size it's a 530 seconds and they also have this screw so that's these two items in the drill kit here and it's also really common in the directions that people will accidentally drill out the wrong mixture screw plug so like on this particular one which was out of a Suzuki intruder they did a nice job of showing you which screw to drill out or excuse me which plug and people accidentally do this throttle shaft one and that is definitely not desirable so when we look at this carburetor that we're gonna do here we're trying to drill this screw, or excuse me, this this plug right here. Uh, you can move the light, it's actually too bright, thanks. This, uh, this plug right underneath here, there's gonna be adjustable screw. And one way that we determine that is without a service manual, go ahead and hold that right there. As you, if you look down through the carburetor body, we're gonna see here that we have we'll let that focus, this hole protruding from the throat of the carburetor. It must be in this one. Okay, right here. Get a light down there. You see that little hole right there? That's perfect, right there, okay? All right, so another, uh, on other carburetors out there, you might see that the, the Welch plug, Ross, can you point the one out on this carburetor here? Sorry for the focusing problem here. There's a plug there, and yet on other carburetors, you're going to see, hold, just hold it right there, hold the carb right there. You're gonna see the screw here where it's protruding, but sometimes it will be recessed, but make no doubt about it, if you follow the carburetor along, you will ultimately end up seeing that hole inside. Can you point to the hole in there and get a light on it? This one's a little, perfect. Back, move, back up, nope, right there. There you go, perfect. So there's a couple of different ways that uh, you can identify whether you have the right one. Ultimately, I'd say use a service manual and your appropriate uh, microfishes to determine that. I went and grabbed a bunch of fuel, or excuse me, a bunch of wood screws out of our generic bolt bin here to show you some different ones. You, you see, some people like to use the drywall screws. I don't care for these as much. As long as they are, you end up having a lot of leverage that sometimes they'll just pop right out of the plug, which you guys will see what that looks like when we're done here. Um, but the other thing you'll notice here is a real coarse thread or a fine thread. Uh, once again, it's kind of one of those things that why not use what, what works? We know that a 532nd drill bit works, and we know that the, this size wood screw works. So another thing that we've done is used a couple charts here to identify what size these screws actually are. If you take your screws and set them up on these charts, we're, we're kind of getting a mix between a 10 or a 12 on this, on this cheating chart here. But if we use this one, it actually shows us how to measure the diameter, and then we could come up with that we have a number 12 wood screw matches the one in the DinoJet kit that we know works so well. So let's go ahead and actually remove one of these screws. Um, in this set of carburetors right here. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna need a volunteer here. Who's gonna do this? Thanks, Casey. Okay, Danny, grab the drill. And Danny here, he's got a couple of steps that we teach here at the college. And one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to actually mark off the drill bit at three millimeters. We in our, in our lecture, in our curriculum out here, we've taken the time to specify the drill bit, the lab sheet has uh, what size and appropriate thicknesses. So if you go ahead and look at this, uh, at this drill bit here, he's went and marked off three millimeters here. So what that should do is allow him to just barely pop through the Welch plug. This is one to focus. If we go too far, what happens is we take a chance of actually drilling the screw that's underneath, and that would be not desirable. So we're going to get a couple of guys. Al, if you could get over here as well, and let's get them to hold these uh, carburetors. We could get in a comfortable position if that'll work for you. Are you going to do that outside one? 
Yeah, I'm gonna get this one right here. Okay. Now, normally when you drill, you'd put a center punch, and we just can't in this case. That's too bright. Okay, if we can kind of hold that over there. I'll get down here and zoom in on this. So, what we have here is if we use a center punch, we're gonna accidentally drive that plug right on top of the screw and that's not good either. So Danny's gotta be real careful here. He's gonna just ba barely tap that in place. He's gonna be nice and 90 degrees. You go in a standard position because we're using a standard wood screw. And let's see what this looks like here. It's looking pretty dang good. He looks really nice and centered too, right? Now he's doing a good job. He's dealing with brass here, so yeah, I saw him. He just started to pick it up. Do you notice that we're using no lubrication? We could do that because we're deal drilling in a soft metal. Why don't you stop and blow your chips out of the way here? Now, let me get a, a close-up of this, and you're gonna see how, how nice of a job he did at getting that where he's not, you know, coming up on the edge. It's, it's just a tiny bit off center, but we're going to be successful in removing this plug. So stopping and, and checking your work's a good idea. Go ahead. Notice here the guys all have safety glasses on too. We're drilling here. Checking his work. What he's trying to make sure and do is not not pop all the way through. He wants to just catch that. And what'll happen a lot of times, we'll find out here, is sometimes as soon as the drill bit pops through, it'll actually catch the welch plug and break it free anyway, and the welch plug will actually stick to the drill bit. That's super desirable if that'll happen, but if not, then we go to our wood screw technique. Another thing he's trying to do is not move that drill bit around. Keep it really nice at 90 degrees because if he rocks forward and back, what's going to happen, guys? Yeah, I was about to say you're getting kind of close. You're going to oblong that hole. Now, did you just hear something kind of crack? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the welch plug. Now, did it come with the drill bit? No. Great. Okay, we'd rather have it be the harder way to go right now. Now, blow that out for us real quick. <coughs> just blow. Okay. Now, you guys, I want you to notice something else about what we have going on. Hold the carburetors, please. We do not have the carburetor disassembled. We do not have the float bowls off. We do not have it in a position like this where we're gonna get all those metal filings in there. I also want you guys at home to notice this too. Do you see how well we protected the work area? We've got, a, uh, we've got carburetors that are apart here. We've got motors that are apart here. We're being really conscious to our work area to protect our, our, uh, our other classmates here. Just a good point to make for you guys uh, that are doing this uh, out of your garage. All right, we could see now here let me get a close up of this. I do not need any light. This is good. And I can, just to focus here. All right. You can see the screws underneath. He did a really good job. Looks like we, if we did hit it, it's, we've just barely hit it. I mean, we just barely touched the surface at. What we don't want to accidentally do is drill out the place for our straight blade screwdriver. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to back this up here and take a look at something else that we do as a technique that seems to be uh, work really well here. What you're going to notice here in these two screws is you have one with a larger, really sharp point, and then we have, uh, is this one you ground off? Yeah. Yes. Then you're going to see here where it's the same screw and we basically ground off the point. Now the reason this is nice is we will attempt to use the longer one first and what we're trying to do is not actually hit the, the fuel mixture screw that's underneath. And if we, if we are unsuccessful in removing it at first with the long one, we will then switch to the blunt one which will allow us to go further up the threads, getting more contact area, to then use a pair of pliers and then pull it out. So watch that technique right now as we go ahead and do that. The other thing that we're gonna do, I'm gonna need these, I'm gonna need these over here. Let's see if we can get you guys to stretch. A little uncomfortable, but we're gonna try and do this. Is he cannot push down so hard. Hold on here. He cannot push down so hard that he's going to actually shove it right on through. I'm gonna Okay, right there, that looks good. Now go ahead and try and thread that in there. Now he's gotta give it some force, but he's just watching to see if that's gonna push on through. He's gotta make sure his screw doesn't slip. Feel pretty tight? Yeah, it's nice and tight. Nice and tight, okay, now switch to your pliers. Now what we're, what we're bumping up against is the uh, choke. There you go. Don't go back and forth, just come towards me. Mm. 
really in there. Yeah. It's coming. Do you see how it's lifting up? Just stop for a second. Let's get the camera in here. You can kind of see how that back corner's lifted up. So now that we've now that we've kind of broke it free, you could try and go back the other way. If you just start wiggling before you break it free, what do you do to the hole? Wallow it out. Yeah, wallow it out, exactly. Can you get that light off there for me? Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Now, a couple things here. Hold on. <laughs> okay. You can you can see where that drill bit just, just barely kissed that bit. And we were super, super, or excuse me, I screw, we were super careful. So you see how important it is to not go beyond that three millimeter? You guys will check that out in a second. Now give me the screw. Where'd it go? Well, I've got it. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and set this here. And this is what I was talking about. That's all we're drilling out. That thing is pretty small. Now guys, listen to me, pay attention. Had we, you see how far that screw is, would you agree with me that this longer screw is also what dinked the, the screw underneath? Yeah. Do you understand now why I really like this guy? You understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's just a tip at home that you guys can use to remove these welch plugs. These guys are going to practice and do some more, but uh, once again, we'll keep working in the lab here at Western Iowa Tech in our motorcycle and power sports division. Okay guys, one, uh, one other thing we're going to add to this video here is now that we've removed the welch plug, uh, we, what we're ultimately trying to do is to service these carburetors. We're going to get these good and cleaned up. There's a good shot of a, of a before and after. But you just don't take the screw all the way out. We want to do what's called baselining and we want to see what that screw was set at. So what Danny's actually going to do is he's going to thread a screwdriver in and he's going to count half turns or what we call flats. And watch out. Hold on Danny, not yet. So I, I, in the camera here you could actually see the Phillips screwdriver and this is going to be half one half and then so on and you could count it in quarters once you get to the bottom so he's going to see what that screw set at go ahead what we end up with three quarters tight right there this was only at three quarters 